Number 3. Female Point of View This happened back in the summer of 2009. I was fresh out of a marriage that I had jumped into too quickly, and here I was looking to find myself again. So I called two of my oldest siblings that live in New York City, and I told them that I was coming for a visit. Needless to say, they were elated. I only had to pay for my bus ticket there. It was rather cheap, and I had a good job at the time, so I was able to purchase on a whim. Gleefully, I packed my suitcase so full it could barely zip, with all my favorite summer clothes, jewelry, makeup, etc. I get to the bus station, and all is going well. The lady at the customer service desk hands over my ticket, and I wait for my bus departure to be announced. Along the way on the bus ride, we made a few rest stops until we get to our transfer station in Philly. And this is where things got weird. Everyone transferring buses gets off, and a new group gets on. I see a lot of strange looking people, but none stood out, like this one. There was a guy with long straggly brown hair, thick glasses, and a wild beard. He wasn't bad smelling or homeless looking. In fact, he looked quite well put together and smelled of cologne. He just kind of had this creepy serial killer lumberjack vibe about him. Whenever I travel, I always take the window seat. It's my thing. And lo and behold, creepy guy sits right next to me. He starts talking. It was innocent enough. I'm not much of a talker by nature, so I just listen. He talks about his sister's wedding stating that he had just attended it in Philly and was telling me that he was on his way back to New York City. I nodded and smiled. He then said in the creepiest whisper I've ever heard in my life, I'm going to kiss you now. And before I could respond, or react for that matter, he planted his lips onto mine and his scruffy beard scratched my face. I yelped in horror and punched him as hard as I could in his arm. He then let out a loud, insane laugh <laughs> and said that he loved me and he knew that I was the one. I've never seen this man a day in my life and I didn't know him from a can of paint. I soon realized that this guy was mentally disturbed. Just as I stood up to cross over him and go complain to the driver, a young woman appeared a few seats behind us, profusely apologizing claiming that he was her cousin and he had a mental disability. She offered to trade seats with me and I accepted. The whole time his laughing gets louder and louder and more disturbing. That was the end of my interaction with them. But the next bus stop as I was getting off to get snacks, I walked past their seats and saw the two of them making out, whispering and laughing. What the fuck? They were very strange people. I don't know if they were really cousins or not, but I was glad to make it to New York City and see my big brother at the station waiting for me. I ran into his arms, clearly shaken. He asked me what was wrong, but I never told him what exactly happened. Nevertheless, he and my sister tried to comfort me, but I still wouldn't spill it. I have been a frequent flyer ever since this incident occurred. Even thinking about it gives me the creeps. Number 2. Female Point of View This happened when I was 9. I left school early because my brother and his friend Sally, who were both 7 at the time, had a dance performance later that day. I was with them and Sally's mom and aunt. I did not look like I was with them. My brother is very dark skinned and he looked like he could have been Sally's sibling. On the other hand, I'm pasty, almost sickly looking, and we would often get stares when I was with them. So we were sat on the bus. Nine year old me is in my school uniform, which is a gray knee length skirt, white shirt, and my red jumper that is tied around my waist. I was sat alone. I had my lunchbox on the seat next to me and I was minding my own business. About halfway through our 30 minute journey to the theater where my brother was performing, a guy gets on the bus. 
He was the very stereotypical creeper type. Overweight, smelled unclean, baggy, dirty clothes and scruffy facial hair. He made his way up the stairs and stood over the seat next to me. At the time, I didn't realize that there was plenty of other empty seats he could have sat in. So I moved my lunch bag, thinking he needed the seat. He sat very close to me, and I could feel his eyes on me. I was uncomfortable, but being the shy kid I was, I didn't say anything. He sat next to me for a good 10 minutes. Then his demeanor changed. He looked around quickly and moved his hand towards my leg. That's when Sally's mom, who was in the seat behind him, hit him over the head with her umbrella and said, Stop looking at her legs, you dirty pig. He moved. Looking at him, I don't think he had ever moved that fast in his life. The rest of the journey was okay. I was shaken, but relieved that Sally's mom had seen what he was about to do. As we got off the bus, I looked up at him, and he gave me a menacing smile and winked. I hurried off the bus and pretended it didn't happen. I saw him on that bus every day for the next year, until he just randomly disappeared. A few years down the line, while searching for a news piece on a local website, I came across a mugshot of the exact man with that same menacing grin. The article explained that he had been caught with child pornography and later admitted to the rape of a five-year-old girl. Number 1 This encounter happened to my mom when she was in middle school in the early 1970s. Her family lived outside of town, so she rode the bus to and from school. She was in sixth grade and had a boyfriend who also rode her bus. They would sit together and hold hands, but they were not inappropriate with their interactions. The bus driver took notice of their relationship and started to make comments to them. He would ask if they kissed a lot, if they tongued, and once even asked him if he sniffed her underwear. Not knowing what to do, they just did their best to ignore him. On the last day of school, the bus route went as usual, except that the driver skipped my mom's stop. When he stopped at the next house several miles away, she tried to get off the bus with the girl that got off at that stop. The kids all knew each other pretty well and were friends. The driver stopped her and made her sit back down. Every stop after that, she would try to get off, and the bus driver would tell her to sit back down, until she was the last one left on the bus. She was already terrified and crying. She said that she didn't remember if she was praying out loud or not, but she remembers just begging for an idea of how to get away. The driver told her to move in front of the bus, right behind his seat. Instead, she picked up her things and moved to the very last seat. On her way, she set her books and things in the middle of the aisle, hoping that if he came after her, he would be slowed down. He finally started back down her road towards her house, but turned off onto a dirt road leading back to some brush. She finally decided that even if he slowed down enough, she was going out the back emergency door and running for it. As he turned down another dirt road, leading deeper into the brush, she happened to glance out the back window to see her dad and her older brother and their truck following behind. She shouted up to the driver, You better stop this bus right now. That's my dad behind the bus. He then stopped the bus and opened the doors for her to get off, but she was too scared to move. Within a few seconds, her dad was on the bus standing right up next to the driver so that she could walk around him. He told her to go get in the truck with her brother. As she sat on the truck, she could see her dad through the back window, just going off on the guy, only verbally unfortunately. When her dad got back into the truck, he hugged her like never before, and she just lost it crying. She knew that if her dad was scared, she had just escaped with her life. Now, this wasn't just a coincidence that her dad had found her. Every kid who got off the bus after they missed my mom's stop had gone home and told their parents that the driver wouldn't let her off the bus and that she was really scared and crying. 
The parents all called my grandparents to let them know about the stories that they were getting. My grandparents never reported the incident to the police or the school, but they did talk to the owner of the bus company and they never saw that guy driving again. My mom believes that they didn't report it to the police because her dad had threatened the driver's life and would, in turn, report that to the police. My grandfather went to his grave without ever revealing what he said to that bus driver. Several years later, my mom was talking to her mother-in-law about grandma's cousin who was married to a guy from my mom's hometown. She was telling her that this guy was in prison for impregnating his 14-year-old stepdaughter. As an off-the-cuff remark, she mentioned that the guy used to be a school bus driver in the district where my mom went to school. My mom almost passed out at this news. I know what you're probably thinking, and I feel the same way, that they should have said something to the police and had him arrested long before he found another potential victim. I believe they made a mistake in that regard, but I'm glad he ended up in prison though. There's always a reason to be afraid.